Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my statistics tutorial series. This is the final part, and in this part, I'm going to cover root mean square deviation as well as chi square tests. And of course, I'm going to provide code for all of the above. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the root mean square deviation is the measure of the differences between sample points and the regression line. And we are using all of these formulas, just to reinforce this, to better understand how well our regression linear equation is estimating our data. So we find the residual for each data point. And this is a residual just from this point, from your regression line to the sample point. And the residual is just, you know, going to be represented by a whole bunch of black lines. I didn't draw all of them in there. I think you understand. And if each residual here is E, what we're going to do is take the sum of all the residuals squared and then divide that value by the number of samples minus one. And on the right side of the screen, you can see that we have the table with both the samples and the regression line values. And we're going to use those to calculate our root mean squared deviation. Now, if I calculate E by subtracting the value of my regression line from the sample Y, I then square all those values and find their sum. And if I divide by the number of samples, minus one, and then find the square root, you can see I get a value of 28.86. And that means for one standard deviation, which it makes up for 68% of all samples, our regression line will be off at most by up a plus or minus 28.86. Okay, so that is what that tells us. We could then go on and add, sub, add and subtract 28.86 and create two more lines that will capture that 68% of all values. And we could even go further and add in another line on the top and bottom if we would like to capture 95% of all possible points. So what I want to do now is jump over and in code show you exactly how to make this calculation. So here I am in our statistics file and you can see I also added the chi-square list numbers table which you're going to find out more about here in a minute but we're going to right now focus on the root mean square deviation. So like I said before it's just going to calculate the difference between the samples and the regression line and I'm just going to keep this simple and just call it root mean squared deviation and of course it's going to be passed an array of values to work on and why don't I show you what those are going to be and here is the regression list so we're going to have our original values sample points and then we're also going to have the regression points so the first block first list is going to be the actual numbers the second is the regression Okay, so that's what's being passed inside of it. So now I have to work with it. What I want to do here first is I want to separate the two lists that were passed in. So I'm going to call this Y sample list is equal to I for each value inside of here. I'm just going to place them inside of our new list. And then I'm also going to get Y regression list. Basically do exactly the same thing once again. And in range, forgot the 4i in range of args again. Oh no, this isn't going to be, it'll just be in args. Sorry about that. Now I got those in sample or in separate lists. What I want to do now is get the total number of samples. So let's call this sample length. And to do that, I just go len and args and oo. I'm going to create the numerator. And these are going to hold the sum of the differences between the samples and the regression line. And the denominator, which is just going to be the sample length minus 1. And now what I need to do is go get the sum of all of those values squared. So I'm going to say 4j in range. And that will be sample length. And I'll get the difference here first by saying args and... 0, 0, and j minus, and basically the same thing again, except change this to 1, 
I'm then going to get the numer or take this value and put it in our numerator by going math and to the power of difference. So this is going to be squared. And then I can return math, the square root of the numerator divided by, divided by the denominator. And that is all I need to do. Now we can go and copy this guy right here, jump back over here, and we can go and make this calculation just by saying print and root means squared deviation and go stats this guy right there and then pass in our sample regression list and if we run it you can see that it comes out to 28.86 all right so exactly what we were looking for all right so now I'm gonna jump over and talk about the chi-square test. All right, so whenever we, or before we are able to actually complete our chi-square test, what we have to do is make sure that our data has certain conditions met. So what you're gonna to need to make sure is that your data or your samples are random, that they are large, and by large, what we mean is each cell must be have a value greater than five, and they must also be independent. And what we mean by independent is that we use sample with replacement or the 10% rule. And sample with replacement, like I had said previously, is whenever you take a sample, you have to place it back in to potentially be taken out again. All right, and basically what the chi-square test does is it is going to test for homogeneity and it's going to be used when you want to look at the relationship between different categories of variables. And this is gonna be used when you sample from two groups, and basically you just want to compare their probability distributions. So what we're trying to do in this specific example is we're trying to find if the age of a viewer or a fan has any effect on the person's preferences for a favorite sport. And our null hypothesis is that age doesn't affect favorite sport. And of course, the alternative hypothesis would mean that it does. So in our specific example, if we calculate the percentages for all columns, we get these results. And now to prove the null hypothesis, we should expect that 25% of 18 to 29 year olds should prefer the NBA, for example, because that's exactly how this works out. And of course, also the percentages should work out for all the other different sports organizations. And the easiest way to calculate the expected value for each cell in our chart is to multiply the cell column uh, value by the row total and then divide by the total number of people. So the expected value for 18 to 29 year olds that like the NBA is going to be found by going and getting 66, multiplying times 35, and then dividing by 142. And if we do that, we see we get a value of 16.3. And what I did was I went and calculated the expected value for each cell and you can see that the row column totals are still going to be the same. And the chi-square formula basically works out to coming in here and going and getting the sum of all of the observed samples versus the expected squared divided by whatever the expected result was. And if we go and perform this calculation, this is going to work out to 11.59. And the larger this value, the more likely these values are going to affect each other or they're going to be correlated. And if we go and look up this value in a chi-square table, but before we can go and plug this into what's called a chi-square table, which you're gonna see here in a second, what we have to do is first go and calculate the degrees of freedom for our data. And to get that, what you do is you multiply the number of columns minus one, by the number of rows minus one as well. And that gives us a total value of three times one or just simply three. Now what we can do is jump over and take a look at our chi-square table. And we find our degrees of freedom in the closest match, so degrees of freedom was three, like we said before. And if we slide down inside of here, we see that we come into this position right here, 
which means that we are 99% confident that age doesn't affect a person's favorite sport. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take all of this stuff and go write all the code for it. All right, so in our main Python file, you can see that what we did was we took the 18 to 29 year olds data and the 30 something year olds data or preferences for different sports. We're gonna save that and then we gotta go over and actually create our chi-square test inside of our statistics file. So here we are. And what am I gonna call this guy? Well, I might as well just call it chi-square test and you already saw the data that's coming in. So we'll have that list. Very first thing I wanna do is separate the two lists that were passed. So I'm gonna call the first one list one, and again, go and grab that. So for i in args, gonna do basically the same thing for list two, and paste that there. If you have the formulas in front of you, that might help you out here a little bit. Just change this to one. Okay, so we got both the lists. Now what I need to do is go and get the number of columns that we're going to be working with. So I'm gonna say length and args, and there we are. And then I'm going to get the number of rows also. So number of rows, and that is just going to be, get rid of this right there, okay. Now I'm gonna calculate the degree of freedom because I have everything here that I need to be able to make that calculation. So I'm just going to say number of columns minus one multiplied times the number of rows minus one. Okay, so we got even more data. What else do we need? I can just keep this all in one place here. And after we calculate that, what I wanna do is sum or get the sum of all the columns and rows so we can perform our calculations. So I'm gonna call this column sum list, and that is, I'll just call sum, I'm gonna cycle through all these values and sum them up for x in and zip and args, right like that. And I'm also going to get the row sum list so it's almost exactly the same. Might as well just copy this, change this to row sum list, and it'll be sum x once again for x in, and I don't need zip in this situation. I can just change this to args, get rid of this part right here, and that works out great. And then I can get a sum of our rows, which we're gonna need for our calculation. So I'm gonna call this row sum, which is I just need to go and get sum of the row sum list. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna create a table of expected results because we have to make that calculation as well. So expected table like this, and I'm gonna have a temporary list where I'm going to create each list that's gonna go into expected table temporarily and then to, you know append it to expected table. I am going to say for i in range, and we're going to go based off of the row sum list. And once again, for j in range and length, and this will be column sum list. And then I can go and get temporary list and append into it. And I'm gonna round these values because it doesn't make sense to do fractions. So this is gonna be row sum list and I times column sum list J divided by the row sum, exactly like we saw in the formulas that I told you before. Then after I cycle through that, I can say expected table and append our temporary list. And then after that, I wanna reuse my temporary list, but I don't want any information in it, so I am going to clear that out. And then I can come in here and get our chi number, which we will need to look up in our table. And I'm gonna be zero, and I'll say four M in range, and get our length of list one. 
and our chi number is going to be I'll say plus equal to and we have to go math and get our square function so we're going to have expected table o and m minus list uh, one and o m and we're going to square this whoops make sure you do this right like this and then m and this will be squared i can get rid of this here all together if i'd like and then i'm basically going to do the same thing again so throw this inside of here throw that there i'm going to change this to n and let's have this be of for list two of course all of this is exactly the same the expected table is going to be n though of course so i'm doing this separately for both of our lists this is going to be changed to list two this is going to be changed to n and you know what i might as well do all of this all in one place so i'm going to go and do expected table o and divide that right there and then i'm going to go and do exactly the same thing for the next line and just change this to n all right so there we got it now we have our chi number and after we get our chi number what we can do is find the confidence in our chi table so i'm going to say 4 p in range and i know i have nine values in that table what i'm using is this guy right here so there's all of those values that i showed you before and this represents the different confidence levels that we have so i'll come down inside of here and i'll say if chi number is less than or equal to chi square list and we will use degree of freedom and we'll use minus one because it's zero index list p so if we hit that point then what we can do is come in and say print and confidence and that would be one minus chi per list and p and then we can break out of this all together all right and that's all we need to do jump back over inside of here and test it out so what we need to do is just go stats and chi square test right there and then passed inside of it the favorite sports list and if we run it we see we get a confidence of 0.995 all right so good stuff you also see we get the chi number all right, so there you go, guys. Whole bunch of different information. You've completed the statistics part. You've learned so many different things. And up next, we are going to jump into linear algebra and continue down our path of the math of machine learning. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.